So this was another one taken on the spinner rig, on the lead clip arrangement with the soft coated braided boom. Got a really good bottom lip hook hold on this one. Well, what a lovely way to start to talk about pop-ups with a 30 pounder. Yeah, pop -up. yeah, no, it's a nice result this morning. It's nice to, nice for you to be able to see one of the old ones from the wall pack yeah, as well. Yeah, I've heard a lot about them. So you're campaigning on here. You've yep. been on here since? So I've been on the complex um, on and off for the last two years now. Right, um, but this, this is Lake 8. This, this is Lake 8 and I'm, I, won't be, I won't be rejoining uh, come March, so I thought it'd be you know, I'd, I'd invest a bit of time to fish it over the winter because there's a, you know there's a big carp in this lake and it's it's well worth having in the album. Yeah, um, what's big? How big do you think it is right now? I'd like to think 50 plus. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last came out 47, 12 in October. Right. Okay. Start start of October. Nice. One of these scaly ones or a or a. Or no, a... it's sort of um, it, you know it's sort of one of them big big sort of round grey sort of brutey looking mirror like yeah, you know nice sort of yeah real cool one but no it's, it's worth mentioning that fish has actually been caught over 49 pound in the spring right okay. so that that is it's i think just like it was ounces under 50 pound right okay so it could easily be e there. easily yeah so yeah, I'll, I'll keep going for the next couple of months and see if we can uh see if we can't catch it like you know so why pop-ups then yeah i like to fish pop-ups in the winter because um I think, you know, like in the summer months, spots are obviously a lot more polished where the fish, fish are feeding a lot more heavily. Yep. Um, and I just find that the lake bed this time of the year could, could be a little bit messy on the bottom, you know, with a lot of leaf litter, uh, dying weeds, yep. you know, all the weeds breaking up. Uh, um, you get big winds like today, you're getting twigs and all sorts falling in. Do, yep. do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. And I just find, I, I find the pop-ups a lot more versatile, you know, I don't feel like I, I need to be as, precise with spots and such you know I'm but you quite... are precise with spots. I, so come I, on well like, yeah we were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. where you caught that 30 from you're like yeah. no not that tree yeah. not the not the tip of the tree to the right but see there's a little v between yeah. it's got to be in that v yeah. so yep look so, the, the... so you're pulling the wool over eyes if okay you're okay you're not, you're not as because that is yeah. a big part of all you guys that i that i fish around and i'm the same it has to be where it has to be yeah yeah of course yeah yeah yep yeah, yeah. and i think people don't people settle for oh that was okay when actually it wasn't yeah no, exactly no, you know no, when no, it's going to yeah, go don't yeah. you? I when think it goes down and you're like oh my that's going when you're starting to get bites off spots you know you know what drop you're looking for right yeah and what drop are you looking for out there well on i mean that, on that on that particular spot is that out there's a hard spot right. right it's but it's a little bit hit and miss you've got some real fine gravel but then you've got the odd sort of bigger rock down there yeah and i i'm so you want I'm, a thud, not a clink. You don't want to clink onto a stone. You want to. Yeah, but like some of the fine stuff is is obviously hard gravel as well. Yeah. Right. So is that that's quite that's very difficult to distinguish if you've landed on a rock or a bit of fine gravel. Right. Okay. You know. Um, but I wouldn't want a chance fishing a, a, um, like a bottom bait. You know, with my hook lying flat against that. Yeah. So the so the 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 spinner with the wafter and the hair is is out in this situation You're yeah 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 for me i mean because of thinking the point of the hook. yeah yeah sure yeah right. yeah i'd happily fish that if i was adamant that it was completely fine gravel right i'd be happy with my hook laying flat yep so just with that you know with the spinner rig with it being such a lie low and pop-up i think it's a lot it's a really nice presentation anyway yeah but it, that just gives me peace of mind that my you know my hooks off the bottom that that cannot be disturbed in yeah, any yeah, way yeah. that that to me, for me that's fishing yes you know i've got to leave that rod out for you know it's, it's over 12 hours in the winter isn't it 14 yeah, yeah. hours of darkness yeah yeah you know i want if, if i'm if i'm prepared fishing. to leave my rods out that long yeah they i need to be 100 percent my mind that that's fishing sure and what about how the fish feed do you, do you think well this that, that they are, are they feed differently they're a bit slower yeah, uh, you know, and pop up suit that, or is that not in your? No, no, hundred percent. No, that no, no, that is in my thinking. I, I do think the, I, I don't think the fish, may, maybe at times they could be more ravenous in the winter, but I think more often than not they're not. They're just picking, aren't they? Yeah. I think they'll come in on a bit of smell or, or whatever you've got out there, but are they actually hoovering, hoovering it all up? 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe sometimes. Yeah. Well, but, it, and if, but if they're not in much of a feeding mood, then I'd feel more confident that I, I could potentially get a pickup of, you know, a, a little, a little pop bright pop up. Yeah. Rather than, you know, like something hard to the deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said the, the other key thing you said they're little. Yep. So you're using small hook packs yeah. most of the time. 12, 12 mil pop ups all the time, yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, up, up until um, the last few weeks, I had been catching on on 16 mil pop ups over spreads of boilies still. Right. You know, but when but I've, I've, I've found Was it. That's before that cold spell? It's before the cold spell, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that, is that what made you change, that it, the water temperature went right down? Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they probably weren't feeding as hard, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing is as well, the, the, the bird life this time of year, they're so hungry, aren't they? You, you yes. get armies of tufties come on, and if, because I've been, I've been trying to keep a little bit of bait going in the times that I'm not here, I don't want a chance that, that being a waste of time, because if that doesn't get fed on overnight, them tufties are in and they've, they've mopped you up within minutes, haven't they? Yeah. So. 20, 50 baits, whatever, can get demolished by the tufties yeah, a lot quicker than yeah. a load of little bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're fishing these hook baits over crumb, crumb boilies. Yeah, so I'm still fishing the same boilie that I've been applying since October, since I've yeah. come on here. Yeah. But I'm just, like you say, I'm just crumbing it up. And a bit of corn I've seen you Yeah, a well. little bit of corn. Maggots. Sweet corn's great, great in the winter. And yeah, yeah and yeah, a few, not, but not going over the top with the maggots, it's just, it's yeah. just sprinkling, yes. you know? So, it, so a feeding just, trigger, but not yeah. something to become preoccupied on. Yeah, yeah, it just has a little di different dimension to your bait, doesn't it? Yeah, um, you oh, know. yeah they love them, don't yeah. they? They yeah. love them. And I like the fact that you're not using them exclusively, because I don't think, as a fishery owner, um, I don't think maggots used exclusively are good for lakes. I no, really don't. No. All they ever get is caught. They get no yeah. nutritional value out of them. And I understand that people use them because it does switch the fish on. Yep. I totally get that but using them as part of a mix where they're getting nutrition from the other bits. They're getting something mm -hmm. as well as getting a hook in them. And yeah. I think we all got a moral responsibility to, to keep them healthy. Yeah, you know for I mean? sure. Keep them growing and, yeah. you know, they get yeah. fed through the winter. They're in much better condition in the spring, you know? Yep. Um, all right, so let's, let's have a look at the one, because you've got two different ones out there, both spinners. So the first one, we've got a soft coated material. Is that Entrap soft? Yeah, that's the 30 pound. Right, okay. Any reason you're using the heaviest one in breaking strain terms? I think it just adds a very slight element of, I mean, it's still very supple, yep. but it just gives it that, you know, a little bit more stiffness. Right, okay. So it's it, it's it's stiff enough to not tangle, stiff enough That's to right, fall yeah. away, yep. but not not so stiff that it's like a boom Is section. That, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and length there, probably eight inch, something like that? Yeah, I aim for about seven and a half, seven and a half, I like seven and a half, right. eight inches, yeah. And why have you arrived at that length? I like it around that sort of length because, well, one, when I'm casting, you could you can see the separation on flight, whereas yep. if it's too short, I, I find that a little bit... You can't uh, see if it's wrapped around the tubing or not. You, yeah. You can see the two are apart in yep. the air. Yep. You know it's going out, they're untangled. I'm also, you know, I'm not just fishing hard spots. I will be fishing into the silt as well. So that just gives me a little bit of reassurance that that, that is sitting right out in the lake bed. So if the, if the lead's gone into a bit of silt, That's there's right, enough yeah. hook link there to still be sitting on top of the substrate. Yep. If there's a little bit of weed out there, it can sit over the top of it. Yep. Bend up in the middle. As long as that hook bait is, yep. is the, the, the putty underneath the hook bait is sitting against the lake bed and the hook is standing up, yep. then it's still fishing. Yep. And what about the what about this double loop at the at the hook end? So you've got you've got a spinner swivel with a ring on, mm -hmm. and then you've tied, I guess, an overhand loop knot. Is yeah, that, it's just an overhand knot. You, yeah, yeah, you can do that in that material. Yeah, it's, right? it's really strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's got the a big bit of putty moulded around yep. it. Um, what why that why that sort of double loop system there with it? Yeah, so I fish it I fish it with the loop on the on the coated braid because. I want that spinner to be able to rotate as freely as possible. Yep. I, I, you know, I find because it's quite a soft loop, that may have a tendency to kind of s snarl up around the loop. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, it, if it's soft, it, it, like I've done there, it pulls flat, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so the swivel's yep. not able to, to, to move around on a circular loop like it would be on a stiffer yeah, material. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That, that's, that's the only reason why for that. Right. And your, your putty, there's a lot of, I mean, there must be buoyant pop-ups then. Yeah, they are They are very buoyant pop-ups for 12 millers. Um, and you, you, do you have that sinking fast? Do you have it sinking slow? I, I like it to sink 
reasonably fast. Yep. I don't want it to, you know, fall in a heap straight away. Yeah. But I do also don't want it to, to fall down, you know, like a feather. It, Why is that? Because if you know, it, there's bound to be the odd strand of weed out there. You know, I, yep. I, I don't, want, I don't want that rig sitting up any yeah, higher so, than off the swivel. So if it's because there's a lot talked about critically balancing stuff. You mm -hmm. know, um, it taking five minutes to hit the bottom and all that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. with you that. As, as the leads hit the bottom, as it comes to rest, you've got only got to have the tiniest strand yeah, of weed, yeah. and if it's that buoyant, it can just touch that bit of weed and stop, can't it, and not go past it. Whereas not not only that, I, I don't really, you know, because I'm bit fishing, it's very light, it's very light bait, isn't it? Maggots, yeah. corn, yeah. Uh, crumb chops. It's, it's it's a very light mix. It is. You know, when you know, you imagine when fish, where well, you've done the underwater, when fish are coming in, they're, they're moving their fins. It, it all yeah. kicks up. I don't really, I don't want my pop up bobbing up and down off the hook length. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you want that anchor to the bottom. Yeah. So is it? Would you say it's sinking about the same speed as a bottom bait? If you just threw a bottom bait in, if you just threw a, just threw um, a single boilie in, is it hitting the deck at that same sort of speed or a little bit slower? Maybe ever, ever so slightly slower. I'd right. probably say. Right. If, okay. if you're talking like a 16 miller. Yeah. 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 Um, and then moving back for, from it, back up the hook link, is another bit of putty just in front of the anti tangle sleeve. Yep. What purpose does that serve? Yeah. So that just has a little bit of weight at the back of the rig just to help help that rig kick out. Yep. Almost like a, a match angler throwing shot down the line, the extra weight is throwing That's it. the hook link away from the lead system. Yep. Right. And then obviously just. You know, it will just it will just ensure that that it's hook link is, is pinned down. Yeah, yeah. Against the deck. And a size four crank. Yeah, yeah, a hook yeah. that I've built a hell of a lot of confidence in over probably a good five six years now. Right. You know. Um, and big hook, small bait as well. Is that yeah, is that yeah. a big part of your armoury then? Um, to be honest, I, I have done well on size sixes as well. If I'm right. completely honest, um, but. Yeah, I, more often than not, I do. I do tend to use a four. Right. Um, is, that, had, is that because the gape is wider? There's more chance of the, the point snagging hold. That sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, and that's attached onto the spinner spool and shrink tube over the top, rather than wire shrink tube and not a kicker. I just like the fact there's no movement whatsoever with that shrink tube. Right. You know, I don't. It's I don't, locked onto. It's, there. it's locked the, on. The the, the 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 bend is retained. There's no way it's coming back off again. Mm -hmm. And to change the hook, you're just cutting that shrink tube yeah, up into bits. Just snip it off. off and snip it off with a pair of braid blades. It, it doesn't take much. Yeah, you know, it's quite... sure. Um, and the, the point of where the, the boil is exiting the hook, which to me looks like a roughly opposite barb. Is that what you say? It's about right. That's where the hook bead is. Yeah, I, I just I just like that hook bait just to be sitting just off the bend of the hook. Yep. I mean, I think actually I've probably got those hook beads on the wrong way round to compare to most people but that's how that's I like how I fish mine as well yeah so because they're they're, ta yeah. they're they're tapered aren't they that I end. think they sit nicer against that I, taper they actually the hook bait sits tighter to the hook yeah do you know what I mean yeah 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 no I, 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 that's, I that's, do that's, around that's the that reason for well. that yeah a lot of people fuss over the little tiny bits that may not actually be making any difference if they're catching them if they're not catching anything or they're dropping fish there's something wrong with it aren't there mm -hmm. and you've got to change maybe Maybe the hook link is too long or too short, or the bait is is you know is sinking too slowly. Because that's the other thing about slow sinking hook bait; they end up anywhere in the mouth, don't they? Yeah, they do. It you can know, do. You yeah. can yeah. catch them like in the sides, in the top, all that sort of thing. Where I'm guessing yeah. the combination of a softer coated braid and a reasonably fast sinking pop up, you're nailing them in the bottom lip most. Of the I have time. been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the time. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I've been getting some consistent. Uh, bottom lip hook holds. Right. Is that the reason for using that and not using a stiffer material? I mean, I've I've caught, you know, a good good amount of fish with the stiffer material as well, which is another one that we're going to come on to soon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but why why have the two? What's the what's the thinking behind it? Why why have I been using the two? Why have you got two different pop up rigs on in the same session? I do a small amount of day ticket fishing. Yep. You can only use mono. Because I like right. to use braids, so I tend to, with the mono. I tend to use the lead clip arrangement. Right. Okay. So that's that's kind of the rig that I'll go with if I'm going to opt for a spinner. Right. Okay. Um, whereas and you've been working on the day tickets. So yeah. Whereas usually on, here as well. Usually, on, I mean, I, I I used to use lead clips all the time. 
yeah. um, a good few years back. It's only the last few years that I've started to use the helicopter setup. Right, okay. And, um, and I noticed as well, you're using slack lines. Um, you've got braided reel line on, but you've got slack lines. Yep. Um, I always worry about helicopters on slack lines because there's the helicopter rig's not the best hooking arrangement in the world. No, you know what I mean, no, a, a leg clip no. is definitely more positive when it comes to yep. the fish feeling the weight of the lead that bit sooner. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, I, I always think the leg clip's got the advantage on it over there. Um, yes. So, so you've got anti tangle sleeve onto a, um, a quick change hybrid lead clip. So you're dumping the lead on the take, mm -hmm. I guess. Yep. Yeah. Um, how important is that anti tangle sleeve? being on there and being pushed up tight over that. Yeah, no, that, that is quite important to me. Um, obviously, that's a tungsten anti-tangle sleeve, so that has got a little bit of weight to it as well. Yep. Um, to help, obviously, sit flat on the bottom. Um, and obviously, you know, essentially, it is there just to make sure that that rig doesn't tangle or frap around the tubing. Yep. It just, you know, it just keeps it a good distance away from, from the lead on the cast. Can you remember getting a tangle on that rig or not? No, I don't get tangles on that rig. Right. And I'm quite often re-chucking at night and I've, I'm, yeah. I've got full peace of mind that that's not tangling. Yeah, yeah. any tangle yeah. sleeves I think are a massively that... underused product, but when people put an anti-tangle sleeve on and then they leave a hinge there, they're not actually using it properly. Do you know no, what I mean? It, no. it can still, everything can still fold back against the tube. Well, I've, I've, yeah, I think that's yeah. fine if you're using a stiffer material. Generally, you're not, you shouldn't, I don't, I don't think you're getting tangles. Yeah, I mean, I, with little hook baits, I still I still use an anti-tangle sleeve onto a quick change swivel just to push it all away. So I just absolutely know. Yeah, but well, even with the fluorocarbon, that is... Even with fluorocarbon, yeah. even with boom. Yeah, okay. I use yeah. 15 and, and 20 pound boom. Um, don't use it with 25. 25, I tend to use a, a helicopter rig. Um, and then, then I don't need an anti-tangle sleeve because they're such good anti-tangle anyway, yeah. you know. But if I'm using a leg clip, yeah, massively underrated product. That, that people, if they're not pushing it over the top of that quick change crook, like you've got it there, so it's yep. fixed, yep. they are not using it yep. correctly, in my opinion, and it's not saving the tangles like they think it is. Yep. I, I'm not I'm not worried about that rig kicking up or anything off the bottom of it like that, because obviously the, the material is so soft. Yeah, the hook link as is well. soft enough, and it's got putty on, yeah. and it's got a heavy hook bait, yep. so it's gonna find its way to the bottom. But yeah, no, that sleeve in conjunction with using it with tubing, that is, that's, that's completely tangle free, that is. Yeah, yeah, and a bit of, bit of um, dark matter tube in green. Yeah, yeah, like. yeah. It's the uh, nano version. It's, it's, right, all, okay. it's, it's the slimmer uh, tubing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it's, it's lovely and yeah, supple, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Really and not, nice. They had a match, they had a matching tail rubbers for yeah, it. You need the, yeah, you need the, the smaller tail rubber to go with the nano tube. Yeah, um, so it's just but, a much what, neater setup. What are you, how much attention do you pay to camouflage? How much do you want this to blend in with what it's landing on out there? It's not something I, I overly worry about. I, I just, I, I just like, to, I just like to think that it's all pinned down. Yes. Which, you know, how you've got that there, it's like wet spaghetti, isn't it? It is, mate. That's just going to follow <laughs> yeah. the contours, isn't it? Yeah. And it's so heavy. So heavy and supple. It doesn't, it doesn't put me off. I, I don't, I don't if, if I blank a night, I'm not going to blame it on, on the rig tubing. Yeah, sure. You know? Um, yeah. Certainly not. Yeah. Okay, all right. So that's that one. Let's put that down and then let's go over to the, the heli, heli version because you've been catching on this one as well. Yep. So we've got um, a naked heli system. Um, uh, one of the mini heli safes on there for, for dumping the lead. Still yep. a heli lead as well. Yep. Um, it, the shape. What, what is it about the shape of those that makes you use them so much for this? The shape of these leads. Yeah. I think they I just think they're a good all rounder. Um, yep. they, they're quite good for you know when you need to give give it a bit of a punch out there. Yeah. I know they're not they're not obviously real, real aerodynamic leads, but they. They're nose heavy though, so they're, they're very stable. Yeah, they're, they're nose yeah. heavy. Yeah, that is yeah. The thing. They, yeah. Are, they don't wobble. Yeah, you know, so they do. They do go straight. They won't go as far as a tournament, but yeah, it ain't the biggest lake in the world, is it? And you've got decent rods and three and a half ounce leads. So you, you'll get into all your spots. Yeah, easy. So, so we've got your top bead on your um, on your naked system is a couple of inches up from the from yep. the lead, and you've got a line saver bead on there as well. I'm guessing the line saver is just to protect the line when you're playing the fish. Yeah. Yep. Do you yep. use them all the time on on that sort of system where you've got a um, on the naked fluoro? Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Because okay. um, over time that will that will obviously wear wear the yes. fluoro that rubbing on the you know yes. with, with the um, the ring of the swivel there. Yeah, the last thing you want is for it to go. When it yeah, you, you don't you don't want to be nicking it. No, no, definitely not. Um, and then 
Hook link wise, again, we've got a spinner. We've got the same hook, size four crank, put on in the same way. Only one, there's no ring on the bottom of the spinner swivel. No. Nope. Um, you've got, a, I guess that's crimped, is it? That's fluoro Yeah, that, that's crimped underneath the, the putty there. Right, big bit of putty again. Yeah. Pop up the sink, the same sort of amount. The hook bead is in exactly the same place. So I suppose it's just above the barb, isn't it? But the hook is the hook is sitting over cocked. Yep. Like a claw, just exactly the same. Slightly shorter, that looks to me, than the other one. Yeah, yes. Any reason? Yeah, I will I will fish the fluoro booms maybe around sort of five and a half, six inches. Right. Um, due to, it's, it, you know, it has already got this this movement up and down here. Yep. Um, from the heli safe to the top beads. Yep. Um, so so I, a, I, a less restrictive lead system, yes. so you're shortening the hook link a little bit, so yep. the rig reacts yep. in probably the same exactly. speed. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Um, and a loop at the other end to a quick, to a quick change, yep. swivel like that. Um, so that's hinged that end uh, as opposed to the coated braid that we just looked at. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, because obviously it's a stiff material, I don't, I don't need the anti-tangle sleeve to help kick it away. Yep. It's gonna kick away anyway. Um, yep. And obviously it's just gonna lay a lot more true yep. um, having that hinge there. Yeah, so if it, if it comes to rest, and the swivel sitting up, the hinge allows the hook link to sit down. Yep. So it's all sitting against the lake bed. Yep. Cool. So um, I suppose, um, I'd, so I'd, I'd, I'd probably tend to use this setup more so, um, more than ever in the spring when you're fishing over sort of fresh weed growth. Yeah, when that Canadian's you know, just starting to come yeah, up. Yeah, when it's a few inches up to, you know, sort of foot, I think that's when it comes into its own over the lead clip set up. Yeah, 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 definitely. But then the lead clip set up comes into its own when the weed's right up and you're spot fishing. Yeah. Because obviously you want your, because, you know, if you're fishing a small spot with high weeds surrounding it and you're fishing a heli helicopter rig onto that spot. Yeah. It, it, it's not, you know, that, that setup is going to be going down at an angle onto the spot. Yeah. So it's likely that it's going to be if the kicking up on the rig end. The weeds, yeah, then you could end up the hook link could yep. be suspended off the lake bed. A That's right, bit yeah. Tight, so, but yep. a lead clip with everything being in front of the exactly. lead. Exactly. The hook yep. link has to be on the bottom. Exactly, yeah, it? yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so that, yeah, that's a, that's a good little system. If the, if the weed's just coming up, then helicopter, yep. feed a few inches up. Yep. Um, if you're spot fishing in the summer, go lead back clip. to your lead clip. That's right. And yeah. in this situation, both work. The only reason I'm doing both, I'm just I'm just testing hook holes at the minute. And, right. You know, that, that, that's the only reason, really. But having said that, um, one of my rods is fishing into an old weed bed and some of it is still quite high. Right. And I'm fishing into a little silty strip amongst that. Right. So I am using the lead clip on, on that rod. Right, okay. Okay. Just going back to the hook baits, um, we've got yellows on both of these. Has, has yellow been the standout colour or are you catching on other things? Um, to be honest, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've been chopping and changing a little bit, but white, white, yellow and orange have all been pr pretty effective. Right. And, and over, you, over the winter. Do you goo them or not? Yeah, I mean, well, that one in your hand is, that one's got a um, pineapple goo on, on a white pop-up. Right, okay. Um, I do particularly like using the, the yellow goo on the white. I think yep. once it's been in the water a little while, it just washes out to a sort of really sort of dull. Yeah. A dull, it's, just, it's quite a nice colour, yeah, which yeah, I found yeah. to work quite well. And what about the isotonic, same sort of things? Have you used that one or not? No, I, ha I haven't. I have I have smelt the isotonic. You should, mate. Yeah, it's a good yeah. wind. It's a, a pineapple and isotonic is a great combo. What about garlic? Have you used garlic? Done very well on garlic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah garlic's a really underused one. That orange garlic. Yep. Um, I put that on, I've got some pink garlic pop-ups. I put the orange on them and everywhere I've taken them, yep. that, is, that has done well. Um, yeah, funnily enough, um, I did have a really nice 30 pound common um, in November. That was on a, an orange garlic. Nice. Yeah, it nice. was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really underused that. And it, don't, doesn't smell pleasant, and I think that puts people off. And I think they people get the goo bottles and they smell them in the shop. And if they like the smell of yeah, it, yeah, no, I've done, they yeah, it, yeah, they? no, I've done very, very well with that, especially um, with, with, with zig fishing as well. You know, uh, garlic foam. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, done very well. well I yeah, thought you were yeah. a squid man for your zig. I am. I like I like to use the garlic, um, sort of around Feb. You know, when I start using the zig, sort of back end of winter. Right. And, and are, you then, put, are you putting that on a black hook bait? On a black bit of foam, or are you putting it on um, coloured bits? Black and red, or orange on its own. Done well on both. Right. Okay. Yeah. Done very well on both. That's good to know. Ten. On, an, on another session, we need 
we need to go somewhere zig fishing together because it is not in my armory and i know that in in february march is april's gone by yeah no I definitely let, let's face I've it no no, no one really no one really likes it do they I, no. I'd, I'd rather not be catching them that way but sometimes it, 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 it's the only way it's the only way really yeah, yeah it is especially yeah. on these yeah. lakes like here where you've got 10 12 14 foot yep there that when that sun first comes out there, yeah there, yeah. There. yeah i know at embryo stanton i know i missed out a couple of springs ago where i persevered with bait and i did yeah. catch them but a mobile angler who was good at zigs would have caught a lot yeah. more than me it's when you hear people say oh it's fish terrible this spring like no yeah. one's having nothing you know no one's digging yeah 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 because if they yeah. were it'd be it'd be a complete different result yeah yeah well look what happened at dinton for you that was, uh, that yeah. was unbelievable wasn't yeah, it? yeah 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 you know. yeah yeah um, but it's like first person to do a tactic that they haven't been clumped on before yeah i'm not yeah. i'm not saying i was the first person it's definitely been done in the past you know but it, it had it kind of got forgotten about and no yes. one was doing it when i came on yeah yeah yeah. yeah and i remember yeah. my first spring on there it was it was tricky fishing and no one was doing it and i thought well it's something i'll give a go next spring because i yeah. kind of got nothing to lose yeah, i wouldn't yeah, say yeah. i was a competency gangler then i didn't really right. do really? it I, would, I didn't really do it too often right okay. i've done it as a young That's brave doing it on there mate. well it, it was a challenging spring and i thought i, I might may as well take a gamble do something completely different it felt like it felt like the logical thing to do and and yeah, yeah i think second trip I, I caught the first one and it kind of went from there really yeah, nice no we definitely need to do that but but for now um, I think you've got to refresh all the rods, haven't you, tonight? Yes. Yeah. Um, get yeah. some more bait out and what have you. I'll carry on spectating on number seven. Okay, mate. And uh, no, thanks for that, mate. I think um, that, that that information for people that want to winter fish and yeah. pop up fish generally, that pretty much covers it.